In less than an hour, Donald Trump will be holding an event in the key state of Pennsylvania. So he will make a further pitch there for his economic plan. Uh, tax cuts are at the center of a lot of that. Hillary Clinton, meantime, focusing more on the promise of more government. We talked earlier about free college. Uh, paid family leave is a part of it. Raising the minimum wage is something she talks about. Investing in jobs. More spending, essentially. So how do Trump and other Republicans counter that? We have the former governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee, to start us off this hour. Always good to see you, Governor. Thank you, Connell. Great to be here. Because free stuff stuff is yeah. sometimes an effective political argument. So will it be this time, do you think? Well, or let's hope it? not. Let's hope not because we can't afford it. I mean, we're 19 trillion and growing in uh, absolute debt. The deficit grows. Uh, our economic growth is basically stagnant. We're 1%. We can't sustain our country <laughs> like that. You have so many people out of work. Lowest workforce participation in a generation. So you add all that up and we're in a world of hurt. If we continue on the path that we've been on, which is double the debt since Barack Obama took over from the first 43 presidents. That, I mean, think about that. That's staggering. If we continue on that, we just don't get Call the money. Keep right. going. I mean, there's yeah. no money there. Now, Hillary Clinton is uh, fairly open to the fact that she wants to spend more money and raise taxes to yeah. do that. I mean, that's part of her plan. And you see the commercials are on during the Olympics and everyone else. It's got higher taxes oh, for yeah. people who make more money. And I thought it was interesting politically that uh, just an hour ago she came out with her tax return, right? And Tim Kaine as well. But in her tax return, she was basically bragging about the fact that she pays higher taxes. They put a number out. And Blake Berman, who was our reporter on the story, was saying the campaign's really pushing this, that since 07, the Clinton have paid almost $44 million in taxes. So they yeah. want you to say, hey, look at them. They make a lot of money and they pay their, quote, fair share. I mean, that's, what, that's their argument. They're open about it. What yeah, do you but, make of that? you know, you, you look at this and say their fair share, but look how much money they've taken, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of that is going to turn out to be corrupt money, money that they took in so that they could do favors for people in the official government. Right, the Clinton Foundation that you're referring to. Now, can't Trump come out and counter this? Or, I know he did in his speech a little bit to say, listen, look at this. She, wants, she says she's bragging about paying higher taxes. I want to cut your taxes. I mean, he could be more, the, the message we could hear more, no, from Donald Trump about growth and lower taxes? Well, I think what he's got to also focus on is what his proposal is to take business taxes to 15%. You know what that does? It creates jobs. Right. If an employer is, is spending less money to pay the government for nothing that he gets from the government of any consequence, then that's money that he can pay somebody to come and take the job that he would love to have done. But right now he's having to work 20 hours a day because he can't afford somebody else. The policies of the Obama administration, whether it's Obamacare, have caused business owners to do something they've never done in the history of the American economy, try to stay small. Stay under 30 hours per week per employee. Stay under the threshold of 50 employees because those are the thresholds that cost you a whole lot more money. It does bring up kind of an interesting argument, and it's been one that's been out there all week long from the Trump campaign's perspective of is he going to stay on message? His campaign argues about the media saying, you know, it's headline after headline declaring that things are horrible for Donald Trump. And certainly there's something uh, to that. And, you know, here's some of the headlines, for example, the Time magazine cover, the meltdown thing and, and all that. And the, uh, Which was, by the way, a totally bogus story. Okay. I've been on the trail with Donald Trump the past two days. I got in at 1230 this morning. This whole Time magazine about the conflict between the RNC and Donald Trump and Nonsense. the Trump absolutely untrue. I mean, I was there. I'm sitting there with Donald Trump. I'm sitting there with the senior people. This didn't happen. I've talked to Sean Spicer at the RNC. I've seen the statements from uh, Reince Priebus. It did not happen. This is stuff that is made up out of the thin air. Now, there are other things that aren't, that he's, you know, uh, quotes or, or statements that he's made the last couple of weeks. The old saying is, hey, if you give them a gun, they're going to shoot you with it, right? Absolutely. And there has been something yeah. to that from Donald Trump's perspective, right? Have you ever talked to him about that and say, hey, listen, you've got to stay more on message? I know other people have. You know, have I you think, ever talked to him about sure, that? Sure. I mean, I think all of his friends and supporters say to him, you know, focus on Hillary. Uh, don't let its other stuff get to you. But look, he's a human being. And this is, I think people need to remember, this is the first time he's ever run for anything. Uh, you know, n not even school board. If you, if you run for office the first time, one of the shocks to your system is how brutal the press and your opponents can be, right. how vicious and how untrue. Could be as undoing. How though. unfounded. I don't think so in the long term. Okay. Look, I, I still see that the American people, we're a long way. I know it seems like, gee, we're 80, what, 88 days away from the election. But here's the other side of that. When it gets down to it and we get into the debates and people see, all right, my choice is a person who has truly been now revealed as a serial liar, 
uh, lying not just about campaign promises, but about government secrets, about her integrity as a public official paid for by taxpayers. And a guy who's built a successful business, who has built something, who's created jobs. Um, a person well, that may be able to bring America to a new place of self-respect. I, I think the, the decision's clear. You know how to do that. You just made that argument. You've run for office, as you say, a number of times. You've been the governor of Arkansas, yeah. and you've run mm. for president. I noticed, I was just listening to you do that. That's the <clears throat> argument we hear from yeah. people who are experienced. It's not some people say, oh, they get a bad name. Oh, he's a politician. But it is a business, right? It's like we're in television or radio or whatever it is. Politics is a business, too. I mean, there's something to be said for the experience that you just had to make that argument that maybe sometimes Donald Trump doesn't make as effectively. You know, I'd love to say that uh, I'm more effective than he is, but he's the nominee and I'm yeah, not. So here I'm sitting here talking Fair. about him. That's true. Uh, you know, here's what he has done. He's done it very well. He's connected with a lot of people who know that the big institutions of America, the financial world, the media world, and the government world, has absolutely failed them. And they're angry. They're in a seething rage. But there's not Donald enough of them. Is they have to spread that out, and that coalition, if you want to call it that, has to be larger. It has to be more of the traditional Republicans in addition to these people who are I angry. think there's plenty of them to elect him, but a lot of them have not yet figured out that Hillary is part of the problem. She has been part of the problem. She's been on the government payroll, living in, essentially in government housing, for the past 40 years. She's not had to drive a car. She hadn't shop for groceries. She never clips a coupon. Do you think that she stands in line at the airline counter and on standby and looks, uh, goes on a kayak to get a good price on the ticket? I mean, come on. She said she was dead broke. Do you think she's dead broke? No. Paid $44 million in taxes. So what I'm saying is when people start asking who will actually fight for me and who will game the system to fight for themselves? Hillary's made a lot of money off the government. Right. Donald Trump has frankly made a lot of money in the private sector. Big difference. You did it again. There you go again with that <laughs> argument. Uh, good to see you, Governor. Thanks, wonder, Donald. The only thing I'd say, I wonder you. if it's late, if it really is early, uh, if he really has enough time. At this stage in 1980, uh, Jimmy Carter was beating the daylights out of Ronald Reagan, and George H.W. Bush was getting defeated by Michael Dukakis. Well, I thought so, Dukakis, I thought that was later than that. Like after the convention, I thought the Bush. Du Dukakis leave, really right? started falling apart in September, October. The ad with the tank, him riding right, around, right. and the Willie Horton ad. That's really what took him down. Good to see you, Governor. Great to, to see talk you. to you soon, hopefully. Now,